In this class also, we are going to continue our discussion on uh, electrical phenomena in solids, particularly in metals and semiconductors for the time being. In this context, we have already introduced the concept of band model, how the bands are separated from one another and why the electrons do not have a continuous energy spectrum. In that context also we have introduced the concept of hole particularly for semiconductors where there are both valency band and conduction band and when uh, the electrons gets excited from the valency band to the conduction band we generate holes in the conduction uh, in the in the valency band and the electrons in the conduction band and both these species contribute to the conductivity uh, move the opposite to each other under the application of the electric field and this excitation is not by the electric field because the energy required is not good enough or sufficient enough uh, just by applying electric field. Uh, it is only thermal energy which can excite the electrons from the valence band to the conduction band and thereby generate holes. One of the objectives of considering the band model is to explain the electrical properties particularly the conductivity behavior of all the solids with the same uh, theory and in that context we have seen earlier that the two models which we have considered earlier was not sufficient enough or not good enough to explain all the properties uh, or the electrical properties of all the solids, the semiconductors, the conductors and the insulators. Here is a model, band model which can be applied universally to all the solids and so it, has been, it has been successful to explain most of the properties, electrical properties and uh, particularly the conductivity behavior or semiconductivity in the solids. So, to in, the, in today's lecture we will start with considering the band model of our band uh, diagram, the energy band diagram of in general the metals. What is the situation in metals? How the bands look like and what is their interrelationship so far as the energy spectrum is concerned. This is what it looks. Uh, on the left we have uh, the monovalent metals and in the, on the right there are divalent metals. Uh, this is in fact in case of monovalent metals the this is only one band that is in fact this is the highest band which can be called valency band or one can say a conduction band also. So, the characteristics is it is called half field valency band that means the all the not all the energy states available are filled up with the electrons only half of them are filled up and half are still empty. So, this gives a opportunity for the electrons available in this band to get excited or get slight uh, additional energy when we apply an electric field and they go to a slightly higher level and then conduct, conduct from one state to the other or slightly uh, above this level. So, this is how the conduction takes place because there are a lot of empty spaces. So, the electrons can once exci get excited it can freely move, it can freely move without much hindrance and therefore, the conductivity becomes quite high. So, that is uh, the situation in one group of metals so called monovalent metals 
and that is this situation is called half filled valency band that means there are within the band you do not have to go to the other bands you do not have to go to the conduction band or a higher level of bands even if it is there <coughs> within the band there are enough space or enough vacancies where the electron can move under the application of electric field. So, this is what is the situation at a particular temperature ok of, care of, of course, as the temperature increase the energy band uh, this level the Fermi energy or the not the Fermi energy, but uh, the highest energy uh, of the electrons may change although the Fermi level may be remaining in the, at this position. So, we have a half field band and that is why an electron can move quite easily and with temperature the conductivity will go up uh, will go down as per <coughs> the uh, drift mobility model or the phonon vibration or the phonon interaction that will of course, continue to have only thing the overall level of conductivity will be quite high because large number of electrons large number of free electrons will take part in the conduction process. So, the concentration is very high and the mobility of course, will be determined by the phonon interaction. In case of divalent metals there is a situation is slightly different we have two bands one is the valency band and another is the conduction band, but as such there is no gap. Normally, there is a gap what we call the band gap between the valency band and the conduction band, but in this case there is no gap there is an overlapping band. So, the top of the valency band is higher than the bottom of the conduction band. Okay. Normally, the bottom of the conduction band is higher than the top of the valency band and that is how we get a band gap but in this group of materials or metals uh, there is a overlap. So, immediately although the valency band is filled up there is not space, but because of the overlap it can immediately get transferred to the conduction band through the overlapping region. And once again a, or once it goes to the conduction band the conduction band a, a, is basically uh, empty mostly empty. Uh, so, the electrons can move with that uh, within that band uh, quite freely. So, two situations one is the half field band and there is the overlapping band. One of course, uh, has to remember that this overlapping may not be in fact, in the direction in the same direction of motion earlier we have seen direct band gap and indirect band gap. So, in an indirect band gap uh, the minimum and the maximum occur at uh, two different directions not in the same direction. So, this kind of overlapping also takes place in two different directions. Okay. The top of the uh, valency band is on along one particular um, direction of motion but the bottom of the conduction band may be in another direction. So, it is not exactly vertically uh, one over the other. So, that, uh, but effectively effectively even irrespective of the direction if there is a overlap we will call it a, uh, will be useful for conductivity. So, uh, particularly when the divalent metals are there then that is what happens the valence band is almost full the conduction band is empty and at the same time there is no band gap effective band gap is nil and therefore, there is a continuous transfer of the valence band to the conduction band. So, that is why once again you have a large amount of large number of charge carriers or electrons can take part in the conduction process and therefore, you have a very high conductivity and that explains uh, why, why the metals uh, do have a very high conductivity. 
of course, the temperature dependence will remain the same. The temperature dependence is uh, uh, once again the conductivity will go down uh, inversely proportional to the temperature and that is uh, the origin is uh, not in the available uh, free electrons, but in the mobility of the free electrons and uh, that is the reason uh, you get a resistance rise with temperature or conductivity uh, decrease with temperature. So, this is what is the situation so far as the band diagram is concerned uh, uh, on the metal or the metallic conductivity. Well, there are a few points here uh, what has been more or less discussed monovalent metals like uh, silver, copper, gold etcetera have only one electron in the outermost electron uh, orbit and therefore, the highest band energy uh, uh, highest energy band is only half feet ok. The highest band energy is not band energy is highest energy band. Yeah, its highest energy band uh, is only half field. In case of divalent metals like magnesium, beryllium, etcetera, uh, they have overlapping conduction and valence bands. Okay, so in one case half field, and another case overlapping bands. Trivalent metals like aluminium have band diagrams very similar to monovalent metals. So uh, it's only the higher band will be uh, the lower band will be full and the higher band will have a half field uh, situation. So, whether it is monovalent or trivalent they more or less represent a similar situation. With this background let us look at the other two groups of uh, materials how the energy band uh, looks like. In case of semiconductor this is the situation. Incidentally, in both the cases there is a band gap, there is a gap exists, there is no overlap, there is no half field situation, valence, valence band is fully, fully occupied, uh, it is full in both the cases. Uh, the conduction band is completely empty both in semiconductor and insulator, but the only difference is, is the magnitude of this band gap, magnitude of this gap. In case of semiconductor, the band gap is relatively small. Normally, it is about 1 to 3 or maybe slightly less, in some cases, maybe 0 0.7, 0 0.8, particularly for germanium. Uh, so, it is about 0 0.5 to 3 electron volt, uh, that is the region where uh, these electrons from the valency band can be thermally excited from the valency band to the conduction band and as a result you generate uh, electrons in the band in the conduction band and the holes in the valency band and both these species uh, contribute to the conductivity. So, that is uh, the semiconductor that means semiconductor is a group of materials where the band gap is relatively small. So, that thermal excitation is good enough or uh, just increasing the temperature to some extent is good enough for some of the electrons from the top of the valence band uh, getting transferred or getting excited to the uh, lower part of the conduction band. So, once uh, they get excited you have vacancies here the electron vacancy which are actually holes. So, that hole can contribute to the conduction process and also the electron in the conduction band which has been excited which have been excited they can also take part in the conduction process. Whereas, in insulator this gap is much larger this, and it is normally more than 3 volts it may be 8 volts or uh, even up to uh, 10 12 volts. So, depending on the what is the compound what is the structure. Uh, so, insulators this since the band gap is very large 
it is almost impossible for any electron to get excited to the conduction band because you are not providing that much of energy under normal circumstances. Of course, at a very, very high temperature, uh, very close to its melting point, things may completely change and uh, everything may become fairly conducting. But under normal circumstances, the electrons uh, cannot be excited by thermal energy uh, from the valency band to the conduction band, particularly when the band gap is larger than 3 electron volts. So, that is the situation where we get insulators. So, all the materials, uh, metals, semiconductor and insulators can be classified uh, based on their band gap. So, in one case we have overlapping band gap, almost no band gap. In, uh, in other cases a very small band gap and insulators are those materials where the band gap is fairly large. So, that is how one can dif differentiate between these two groups of materials. Having said that, we have two different subgroups of the semiconductors. One is called the intrinsic semiconductor and this is called extrinsic semiconductors. One group is called intrinsic semiconductor, the others called extrinsic semiconductors. Excitation of the electrons take place either by thermal energy that is intrinsic semiconductor or by addition of impurity at ions whose energy levels are close either to the valency band acceptor ions or donor ions whose energy levels are very close to the conduction band. So, impurity controlled semiconductors are called the intrinsic semiconductors. So, if the material do not have any uh, impurity content, so all the conduction electrons or the mobile electrons are generated by excitation from the valency band to the conduction band, then that is the intrinsic property of the material and intrinsic semiconductor. However, you can induce, induce conductivity, you can enhance conductivity or you can push or generate electrons in the conduction band and holes in the valency band by some other means that is by adding certain impurities which take part in the process of excitation. Uh, we will discuss that in a minute, but now we are basically saying that we have two groups of semiconductors. One is the intrinsic semiconductor that is the purest form of semiconductor where impurity effect is not there. So, all the uh, electrons are getting generated by the excitation of the electrons from the valency band. So, that is the intrinsic semiconductor and once you add certain amount of impurities particularly when it is uh, um, uh, semi elemental semiconductors like silicon, germanium and so on. Uh, there you add very, very little ppm level uh, concentrations of different elements. Normally, uh, the semiconductors are group 4 metals or group 4 elements. Uh, we add uh, either group, four, group 5 or group 3 elements as impurities which can act either as donors or acceptors. Uh, we will discuss that. Uh, once again, the semiconductors can be grouped under two some other classific classification. These are called uh, N type or P type semiconductors. N means uh, electron that means negatively charged uh, species or negative charged conductors uh, uh, charge carriers and P means positively charged char charge carrier positively means in this case basically holes. Holes are the positively charged charge carrier whereas, electrons are the negatively char uh, charged uh, charge carriers and that is why where there is a dominance of electrons, electrons because both of them can contribute to the conductivity. So, 
if both of them are present, but normally one of them, particularly in case of extrinsic semiconductors, one of them dominates the other, their numbers far exceeds the other one. So, that is why one is called the n type, where the electron concentration is much larger, much, much larger than the hole concentration. Uh, whereas, the p type semiconductors, the hole concentration is much, much larger than that of electrons. So, the most of the current is carried by the holes rather than um, electrons. Uh, so, far as the p type conductor is concerned, whereas, in n type conductor, we have dominance of uh, negatively charged electrons. So, the conduction band electrons participate in the electric current. The valency band electron can move into the empty states and thus can also contribute to the current that we have already discussed. Um, basically, what it says, I will just say come back. Uh, the semiconductors with predominance of conduction electrons are known as n type semiconductor, whereas the semiconductors with predominance of holes are known as p type semiconductors. Uh, yeah, this is what we have already explained. Whenever there are excited electrons in the conduction from the valency band to the conduction band, then these electrons which are coming to the conduction band has a lot of empty spaces, empty uh, energy states where it can move and these energy states are of course, as you have seen uh, through the k vector, the, all these energy states are actually related to some physical space or physical dimension of the solid. So, the energy states are different sites or different lattice sites are different. So, it will occupy the higher energy states at a different location and that is how it will contribute to the conduction process. In the valency band, when the holes are created, the electrons remaining, remaining, remaining electrons also can move to these holes created and in that process the holes will also move. So, in this case we will say it is a movement of the hole rather than the electron. In fact, one uh, cannot have uh, than the other being moved, other being uh, uh, on the move that means both of them are related okay uh, one cannot move without the movement of the other so uh, both in the valency band the uh, valence, uh, sorry the um, holes will be moving and in the conduction band and the electrons will be moving excited electrons will be moving and co contribute to the conduct conductivity this is what says the valency band electrons can move into the empty states and thus can also contribute to the current. Semiconductors with predominance of conduction electrons are known as n type semiconductors and semiconductors with predominance of holes are known as p type semiconductors. Uh, which are the basic uh, semiconducting materials uh, normally known to us? It is group 4 elements carbon, silicon, germanium. Silicon is the most uh, valued ones. Uh, it is uh, not only cheap, but it has been extremely extensively used in microelectronic industry. So, silicon is the basic building block for the semiconductor industry today. In addition, germanium, tin, lead, all of them have semiconducting property at different temperatures. Uh, they have fully occupied valency band, but no overlap with the conduction band. However, as the gap, sm gap is small, less than 3 electron volt that has been mentioned earlier, thermal excitation is possible. Both electrons and the, and the valency uh, bands and holes in the conduction band contribute to the conduction. For insulators, on the other hand, the band gap is very high that we have already said and thus the thermal excitation of the electron is negligible, no conduction is primarily the band gap which determines the property. We will come back to the acceptors and donors later on. Before that, 
the band gap energy and Fermi energy. We discussed what is Fermi energy and um, that was the highest uh, energy level up to which the electrons are fully occupied or these energy states are fully occupied and that to at uh, 0 degree Kelvin or absolute 0. At higher temperature there is uh, a transfer from the um, transfer of electron from the lower energy states to the higher energy states, states across the Fermi level. Now, here we like to find out that we have discussed earlier in, te, in the context of um, free electron model. Okay. But here also there is a concept of Fermi energy obviously, because the um, basic concept is same. <coughs> impossible to excite the electrons from the valency band to the conduction band by electric field particularly at 0 k. It is possible only by thermal energy that has been already mentioned. So, it is the thermal energy which is required first of all to excite the electrons from the valency band to the conduction band because that is what uh, the band gap uh, is, uh, is so. So, it uh, the band gap is such that only with thermal energy one can excite electrons from the valency band to the conduction band uh, with uh, application of electric field, electric field is not good enough. Uh, now, <coughs> this is we have seen earlier that this band gap is easy okay, and this E f the Fermi energy stays in uh, at the middle of the, um, the band gap. So, this is where the band gap stays uh, at E g by 2. If this is E g and it is a uh, direct band gap material. So, this distance is E g by 2 at that temperature just at the middle the Fermi energy lies or that is for all kind of calculation purposes. Uh, or design purposes, uh, this Fermi energy is taken at E g by 2. And uh, as you have seen in the Fermi statistics that across this Fermi energy, there is a energy distribution as you go up or down the um, uh, it tapers uh, sorry it uh, uh, changes the probability and at E f that the middle of the band gap exactly at the middle of the band gap energy you have a 50 percent occupancy and that is the reason another definition of Fermi energy is where you have all the time irrespective of the temperature you have always a 50 percent occupancy and that is what the distribution curve here means. So, with this, uh, because Fermi energy is uh, one of the very important concept when we are talking about the junctions, semiconductor junctions, either talked about P n junction, P n P n P n junction, P n P junction, the so called transistors, circuit diodes, and so on. So, junction for junction, the Fermi energy concept or the knowledge of Fermi energy is very important. Uh, band diagram of extrinsic semiconductors coming back to the extrinsic semiconductor discussion uh, where exactly or how the band gap, band gap looks. Extrinsic semiconductor within the extrinsic semiconductor there are two types one is the donor or uh, uh, n type or uh, donor type other is acceptor type or acceptor impurity or donor impurity. Now, what is what exactly it means? The these elements have some kind of ionization potential. That means or electron affinity. That means here, if within the band, within the uh, band diagram, you can choose an electron, uh, choose an element or add to this as an impurity, 
or a solid solution formation. So, that this acceptor level of that particular element lies very close to the valency band and that is why it is called acceptors because it has been cho so chosen that the energy level uh, of that particular element is very close to the valency band. In that case, uh, it is a element, it will be an element which has an unfilled uh, outer orbital. So, it will absorb or it will take at it take out some electrons from the valency band. Okay. For example, if you have a group 3, this is elemental semiconductors are group 4 and if you add group 3, so some electron will be transferred to the accepted level. So, electrons will get transferred from here and get adsorb, absorbed by the acceptor level electron. So, if the uh, band diagram is chosen in such a way that the band diagram of the element is closer to the valency band, top of the valency band, then this amount, this energy gap is very, very small compared to the total energy gap. So, for thermal excitation, you need the total energy to be supplied, whereas if there is an acceptor level, you have to supply only very small amount of um, voltage or thermal energy. Small amount of thermal energy is sufficient for electrons to be ejected from there and get accepted by the acceptor level. That means, as acceptor must have a very good electron affinity. Okay it has an absorbing capacity. So, the its energy levels are such that it will automatically absorb or attract the electrons. So, that the electrons will get excited from here, but instead of going to the conduction band, it will just go to the level of the acceptor, because acceptor level is much smaller compared to the, con the band gap here. So, that is the instead of the electrons going from the valency band to the directly to the conduction band, it can uh, go very well to the acceptor level provided one can choose the acceptor level element in such a way. So, this becomes the uh, acceptor level and one can see this limit or this energy uh, is quite small compared to the band gap and even uh, the um, uh, so called <coughs> okay, Fermi energy way up here at the middle of the intrinsic one, but we will see later on if there is a accepted doping the Fermi energy actually comes down and it uh, lies somewhere in between the top of the valency band and uh, the acceptor level. So, the Fermi energy in, the, in case of intrinsic semiconductor is in the middle, whereas Fermi energy for the acceptor or p type semiconductor is somewhere here. This will be when we are doping with acceptor, it will be a p type semiconductor because most of the uh, charge carriers will be holes, will be holes generated here, not the uh, electrons uh, donated to the conduction band. Now, re uh, reverse happens. Uh, or uh, something different happens when you have a donor level that means you choose an element which whose energy level is very close just below the conduction band so it will be just the reverse of what have, uh, has happened in the earlier case so the electrons will be donated here the ionization potential of the donor is very low once again it is only E d which is very small distance away from the conduction band. So, only little bit of energy is good enough for ionize that element and the extra electrons will be contributed to the conduction band. So, donor level or donor atoms actually contributes some free electrons to the conduction band and once 
they get into the conduction band then it becomes very easy for it to uh, contribute to the conductivity process. So, these are the band diagrams for the donor levels and the acceptor level. Acceptor level is very close to the top of the valency band whereas, the donor uh, energy is uh, very close to the uh, conduction band it is just below the conduction band. And this distance either E A or E D is much much smaller than the uh, than the uh, E G E G means uh, this distance. So, you need much less energy for uh, generation of charge carriers. This is just the expanded view of the earlier discussion I mean this is for the donor level and where we just want to show that if the intrinsic semiconductor the Fermi energy lies exactly at uh, in between that is E g by 2 E g by 2 yeah. whereas for uh, accepted doping or donor doping the uh, Fermi energy is at a different uh, location and in case of donor doping Fermi energy is larger uh, closer to the conduction band whereas, for the <coughs> acceptor level uh, it is closer to the valency band. In fact, that is what has been given in the next diagram acceptor level and the E f E f has come down here it is exactly between this two levels the uh, E a and E f and sorry uh, this is E a and uh, this is the acceptor level and this is the Fermi energy. So, it is uh, just midway between the top of the valency band and the energy level of the accepted um, ions. So, this is a p type semiconductor because the predominant uh, charge carrier as a whole both of them will be there is not that electrons are not completely taking part in the process the electrons will also be there as well as the holes will be also there, but the contribution of holes will be much much larger than the electrons in this case when it is accepted doping. So, so far we have learned uh, three different types of uh, semiconductors one is the intrinsic semiconductor where because intrinsic semiconductor by definition means it is only the thermal excitation which generates the charge carriers. So, by thermal excitation you are creating charge carrier both at the uh, uh, at the valency band as well as the conduction band and since it is thermal excitation and the transfer is from the valency band to the conduction band the total number of negatively charged electrons and total number of negatively charged holes the concentrations are given by n and p they must be equal okay. so that is one of the very important criteria for uh, designating any semiconductor as intrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductor means that the number of free electrons and number of free holes are exactly same because the source is same. Whereas, in extrinsic semiconductor either the n is larger or p is larger certainly n is not equal to p. So, if it is dominated by uh, n electrons or negatively charged electrons then it is n type where number of electrons free electrons are much much larger than number of holes the p and in case of p type the p electrons or the whole holes are uh, much larger than the uh, number of electrons free electrons and one can say that is an accepted doping in the other case it is a donor doping. Now, we look at uh, the temperature dependence of conductivity as a of a semiconductor these expressions we have introduced very, uh, very early in this 
uh, in this chapter uh, discussion on electrical conduction. So, it is n e mu basically that is the expression of conductivity n is the number of charge carriers e is the uh, charge uh, per unit charge carrier and uh, mu mu is the mobility. So, these are the three terms which when multiplied gives uh, gives us the conductivity. Now, we have since we have two different charge carriers in general okay, uh, although in N or P type semiconductors one of them will dominate, but in principle there are both the types of charge carrier are there and contributing to the overall um, conductivity. So, we can write N e mu equal to a plus N h e mu equal to N e mu e plus P e mu h. So, N e is actually N the number of concentration of electrons and N h is the concentration of holes. We can uh, simplify it by N e mu e plus mu h exponential uh, e g by 2 k t minus e g by 2 k t and if you take a log plot or a log log uh, log uh, sorry take a logarithm of that then this becomes a constant and exponential e g by 2 k t some kind of an Arrhenius kind of equation it is an exponential um, change as a function of absolute temperature and taking uh, log this becomes constant another constant of course and minus e g by 2 k t. So, the slope will be slope of the straight line it must uh, follow a straight line the conductivity as a function of 1 over t will follow a straight line with a negative slope and the quantity of the magnitude of the slope is um, e g by 2 k. So, by measuring the conductivity as a function of temperature is a very simple measurement. So, by measuring that one can find out what is the e g that means what is the band gap provided provided it is an intrinsic semiconductor and uh, the uh, both holes and the electrons are taking part in the process in the conduction and uh, uh, one can very easily find out what is the value of band gap. Of course, we can only find out the band gap for the uh, two bands involved in the conduction process not the other band gaps. Now, in this curve we are getting a straight line and uh, of course, no particular uh, temperature has been mentioned here it is a typical curve and it is schematic curve. However, if one plots a very uh, the conductivity over a much wider temperature range uh, one gets this kind of a variation it is not always straight line it has some curvature uh, particularly at the low temperature end uh, sorry uh, yeah if you plot a make a plot of uh, log sigma versus 1 over t over a uh, large temperature range then it is really not a straight line it is really not a straight line it has different uh, regions uh, first of all that this is of course the lower temperature end and this is the higher temperature end and uh, you will find there is a negative slope here and let me see okay okay i'll come to that later on there is a negative slope here and then as you increase the temperature uh, the slope decreases it becomes almost horizontal uh, in some range intermediate temperature range and then it changes in a reverse manner that means in this part the instead of negative slope we get a positive slope okay. 
once again at a slight uh, fairly high temperature you get another negative slope, but it is very steep slope. Okay. So, it is a very uh, um, interesting behavior and one can explain in this manner. Uh, we have seen that the extrinsic semiconductor has a much lower uh, slope, because it is not E g by 2 k, it is E i by 2 k. Okay. Uh, here the conduction process is here or the electron transfer is basically taking place between these two points, this valency band and this energy level. So, the conduction process is really very uh, relatively easy, because the activation barrier, activation barrier or the energy required for the excitation or transfer is much smaller compared to the E g. E g is much larger here. So, this is much smaller. So, the slope in fact that is what gets reflected in this curve that is this slope, this slope is much smaller uh, than this slope. In fact, we can go to the next curve and come back to this. Uh, this is another uh, curve um, where you will find there is a slope change at some temperature and uh, at the lower temperature the slope is smaller, where the higher temperature slope is larger and this corresponds to E g, E g by 2 k, whether, whereas this one corresponds to E i, E ionization or the either the acceptor or the uh, donor um, energy compared to the uh, valency or the conduction band. So, the extrinsic semiconductor has a much lower uh, activation barrier or activation energy, whereas uh, the intrinsic semiconductor has an activation energy much larger, which is equivalent to E g and or E g by 2 k, whereas here it is E i by 2 k. And in fact, that is what it is reflected here in this curve. Uh, this is the extrinsic region this slope, in fact this is the extrinsic region and this is the uh, intrinsic region. Uh, you do not see such details of course, in the, in the earlier curve or the later curve sorry this one. Uh, th some details are missing here, but there is a uh, smaller slope at higher temperature and a much steeper slope at the low temperature a higher temperature, this is low temperature and this is higher temperature. So, however, these details somewhere here are missing in this particular curve which has been shown here. So, this is what they call exhaustion region where they becomes more flat and almost becomes horizontal or independent of temperature. The conductivity in this region is actually independent of temperature here it is negative slope, here also negative slope, here is a much lower slope, much lower than this one, but in between you have a region called exhaustion region. So, this is extrinsic region, this is exhaustion region and then this becomes intrinsic region. In between you have positive slope, that means it is behaving like a metal, okay. and the conductivity is going down with uh, increasing temperature. And that is because, uh, first of all, what is exhaustion region? Exhaustion is all dopants are ionized, okay. because in this the ionization is taking place between either the conduction band, uh, between the conduction band and the acceptor or the uh, donor and the sorry, I am I'm sorry, uh, the ionization is taking place either between the valency band and the acceptor level or the donor level and the conduction level. So, in both the cases they are very lying very close to the bands, band edges and therefore, that slope it must be uh, smaller and that is the reason why the extrinsic region, the slope is less than that of intrinsic region, it can be used for the calculation of uh, ionization. So, that is what has been 
shown here that this is E i by 2 k. So, the ionization potential uh, ionization energy can be calculated from this slope whereas, at higher temperature the E g can be calculated the band gap. Then uh, as you increase the temperature more and more number of electrons or the uh, donors or the acceptors are getting ionized or uh, accepting the electrons or donating the electrons. A donor is donating the electron and acceptor is accepting the electron more number of such ions are accepting as the temperature is increased. So, after some time uh, of course, you have to have you cannot see all the time this kind of details because only in certain number when the donor level or the acceptor level are very low then one can see this because this uh, relates to the uh, complete ionization of all the elements all the donors donor or the acceptors level uh, acceptor ions present. So, it may happen if the number of them are very large you cannot see that. So, the exhaustion region comes when the number of dopants are relatively low and uh, all of them got fully ionized there is no further uh, donation or acceptance of the charge carriers. So, charge carrier concentration uh, do not change much that is why you get a almost flat region, but then uh, here in this the mobility term uh, dominates because the charge carrier concentration remains constant after all of them have been uh, ionized no further increase in uh, um, concentration of the charge carriers what may change is the mobility. So, mobility has a positive slope. So, with respect to temperature and that is the reason which dominates in this region. So, there is a small region uh, after the exhaustion region or after the dopants uh, all the dopants have been ionized there is a small region where uh, mobility dominates and the conductivity is controlled by that dominance or that by temper that temperature effect. However, after another uh, temperature rise uh, the intrinsic intrinsic phenomena uh, takes over okay. that means, there you have a direct uh, excitation from the valency band to the conduction band. So, in this region there is no direct excitation from the valency band to the conduction band whereas, in this part of the diagram in this temperature range there is a direct conversion. So, once again the number of charge carriers increases very sharply it is a, of course, always the exponential rate. So, as soon as uh, that temperature is reached a very high steep conductivity change or conductivity rise takes over because there is a direct uh, excitation from the valency band to the conduction band and the temperature is sufficient to do that. So, all others uh, get suppressed. So, all the other uh, variations get suppressed this becomes dominant. So, from this slope one can get E g from this slope one can get E i the ionization potential of the acceptor or the donors. These I have already discussed these are actual some uh, data uh, once again for silicon for example, when phosphorus is added in very very minor quantities you do get this kind of a variation what has been idealized or explained earlier. This is another curve for different concentrations of dopant uh, obviously, as the dopant concentration increases more number of charge carriers gets generated and the conductivity increases and but at the same time the all the details uh, is gets missed out. Okay. So, this exhaustion region is no longer there uh, there is a uh, extrinsic region and then followed by the intrinsic region. So, as the concentration of the dopant increases you lose that details. These are actual curves. Well, I will just take another couple of minutes maybe. Uh, we have discussed the band diagram 
in great details how it is generated and so on. There is another way one can uh, uh, arrive at the concept of the band diagram. Uh, here what we are describing is actually an interatomic spacing okay. uh, as if the two different atoms or two different ions having some um, outer or free electrons in each case are coming close, closer to each other from the uh, from a infinite distance. So, initially the uh, these are the outermost electrons and these are the innermost uh, inner uh, levels. Okay. So, these are the inner levels and these are the outer levels. So, this is the uh, equilibrium distance of separation and till the equilibrium of distance of separation comes uh, there is no interaction between the electron clouds. Okay. The electron clouds do not overlap the first electron clouds uh, overlap the electronic interaction takes place in the outer cell orbits. So, once that interaction takes place there is a called degeneration of the energy levels till that interaction is not there till between the two atoms the atoms are isolated. So, there is a, a line uh, energy that means the discrete energy levels are there once there is a interaction the two atoms comes closer to each other and the electron cloud starts overlapping with each other then there is a degeneration of the energy from the same uh, particular uh, energy level or the um, discrete energy level. So, this no longer remains discrete energy level it forms the degenerated levels and that becomes at the uh, intersection of the interatomic spacing that is the equilibrium distance of separation there you will get the inner level still is not interacting with each other or so as a result they remains uh, still discrete energy levels whereas you have degenerated energy levels here. So, if you plot that on the elevation you will get this band diagram these are the inner levels where there is still no degeneration whereas, in the upper uh, or the outermost orbits because of their interaction there is degeneration. So, there is a uh, semi continuous or quasi continuous energy bands available and the top one will be called the uh, conduction band and the next lower one is called the valency, valency band and in between the gap which is the gap generated here it was the gap is so much and that between the two discrete levels because uh, mm, there is no interaction there are no overlap whereas, when they come each other they start repelling each other and at a particular point at a particular distance the equilibrium is reached and at that stage there is overlap and there is a degeneration and that is converted to a band gap. Okay. So, this is also another simplified way of course, it comes from the same concept, but primarily it is a little uh, uh, different approach from where one can also get a band model. And these models are become more useful when we discuss about the uh, oxides uh, the band diagrams of the oxides and uh, when band, uh, band diagram of oxides will be um, discussed uh, we will uh, discuss some of these uh, concepts. So, since the time is up uh, I must stop it here and uh, thank you for your kind attention we will continue this discussion uh, in the next class once again. Thank you.